Hi everybody, it's Lisa Marie here. Hi my Sweet Lifers. Listen, today we're in the Sweet Life Garden and I'm getting ready to show you the tour for October the 1st, 2022. I've put in a bunch of new beds in for the fall and gotten a whole lot of different things sort of rearranged and acclimated to what we've got going on with the sun and the changes in the season. So in this first bed I've put in some spinach and I actually put in four rows of garlic. And what I did is I took the garlic, you can see some of the skin down here on the floor. I took garlic and I broke out the cloves and then I put them in two inches deep with two inches above them, about four inches apart. And they do really well with the spinach and so that's just where they're going to be. And then they'll grow and we should have a really nice garlic harvest here in a couple of months. The second bed is a bok choy. I don't know if you can see that or not. I can lift this up and show you. There's a bok choy. They're doing very well. They're happy. There's a little rogue tomato plant there. But that'll be ready to start making some stir fry with here shortly, which is good. Third bed, I have got some lemon balm in the back, and I've got some little seeds with some spinach in there as well. And a couple have sprouted. I'm not going to bother to lift that up right now. Back here, I've got my cabbage. No, these are my collards. So I've got a whole bed of collards. As you guys remember from watching the channel in years past, they get to be this big. They're like my big roses in the garden. I love them. And they love this side of the yard. This is their favorite spot to be in. They get some shade. They get some sun. They're really, really happy here. I do need to get some more rue and plant some rue in because rue will keep the moths off of them. But they got put in about two weeks ago, and I've been out here every day giving them a little bit of a sprinkle. And in about probably... Oh, I don't know, maybe by Christmas time we'll have some good collards with some fat back. This bed, I've got to pull the stage, which I'll do while I'm with you today. It's a goner. But as you can see, I've got some sage here as well. I've got a couple of Napa cabbages. In the back, I've got quite a bit of kale. And I put that in about two weeks ago as well. And then I've got two of those great big eggplants in the front and they're doing very well a little bit of pest need to be sprayed a little bit with name but they're doing they're really big and they're doing really nicely there's a little ladybug underneath there too which is nice this bed is a sad bed this is a pitiful pepper bed i pulled the top off and i weeded this bed last weekend and i was going to put some mulch in and i didn't get to it and then the deer have come and if you'll look they've eaten the tops off of all of the pepper plants I don't know what to do about these deer. You see, as you see throughout the whole garden, everything's caged. We've got a couple of problems because the deer love to eat the buffet at the Sweet Life Garden. So I'm going to have to figure out what to do here. One year I put cayenne pepper down, but it didn't work. It also is not too tasty for us humans to eat that either. So I have got to figure out something. Maybe I can net them. I don't know. I'm working on it. But this is the pepper bed, pitiful as it may be. I may just yank them all out and move them somewhere around the pool so that they're encased in that fencing and maybe they can't get to it there. I don't know. Anyway, next bed is my beet bed. You guys know how Uncle Brian is about the beet. We've got it. Oh, oh, rogue. This is where the romaine was before that. Um, you see them popping up down in here? They're just coming in really nicely. Really happy with that. Lots of little itty bitty ones. I did golden. I did uh, ruby red. And this whole bed will be full. You'll get to watch that on the channel as you do the, the tours each month. But this is what it looks like about three weeks out from putting seed in. This bed I moved in. I don't know if you're familiar with parsley. I'm writing about that in my column. Parsley is a, a wonderful herb for just about everything. But the, the most important thing for you to know is when you buy it, the first year it does all of its beautiful leaves that you can use for your culinary stuff and for your herbal medicine. And then it makes a root. And that root right there is when I pull it out of the actual bed that they're in for the herbs near the kitchen and put it into the garden because once it makes its root, the next thing it's going to do is it's gonna shoot up sprouts and it's gonna spread seeds. So I'll have fresh parsley planted from the plant, the mother plant before she dies um, right directly into the garden bed. So this is all the chives. They're doing very well. I did move the lemon balm out from the main part of the pool garden where the apothecary stuff is and put it out here in the main bed with the chives. 
This is the bed that the birds have given us. There's a few things left in here. There's mint. Last year I had some cabbages in here in the fall. I'm debating about really what I want to do here. I really like the fact that I've got sprinkled in the garden flowers. You'll see that in a minute as we go through each of the beds because you see this. You've got bees buzzing. You've got butterflies coming in. They're all attracted, obviously, to the flowers. And it's really important for me being an organic gardener and also the fact that we've designated ourselves as a national uh, wildlife habitat. We've got to keep those out here for these animals to be able to pollinate. So I may not move it at all. I may just let it go. I may cut it back. The deer, actually, you can see in the middle of these beds, a few rogue ones. They love the heads. They love to eat them. So we're feeding the deer with that too. <laughs> this is a pepper bed that we just uncaged. We're going to weed it. I'm going to put some Epsom salts on these guys. This is a bed that I planted back in the spring. And it's got, there's no bells in here. Everything in here are very uh, warm, I should say. There's a little bug there. Warm peppers. Um, some of them are hotter than others. But this is a bed that I don't know, you know, I don't know if they'll eat it down to the ground or not. But I'm not going to run the risk of that because there's a lot of peppers in here. And I do have a lot of plans to do some sauces and some relishes. And I don't want to screw that up by letting them just buffet it and get rid of all of it in one night because that's what they do. This bed is being worked on. This has got some lemon balm here. Bee balm or no, this is lemon balm. Back in the back you'll see some very pitiful shard. It's been eaten up by some snails and also deer and so I'm going to mulch this bed up in the next week or so and reseed everything with shard and put a lot of different uh, greens and put some lettuces in here as well. This bed and this bed beside it, we had melon. And you'll see there's one little bitter melon here. And that's about all that happened in these two beds. You'll see all, look at all the aftermath, sort of the carnage, if you will, of that and all underneath our feet. We've got all kinds of vines and one little itty bitty fruit. So, you know, Sometimes you plant stuff and it looks like it's making a lot of stuff and then you get down to the bottom of it and realize there's not anything there but a bunch of vines. So these have been tilled up. I'm getting ready to put some microlife nutrients in there and some of my mulch from seeing a mulch and get it all prepped up and ready to go. These will be peas because I've got the runners to go on up, up and above and run them on those. And I'm going to put some carrots underneath it and also sprinkle in some onion sets. So these two beds will be peas and carrots and onions. This bed is our eggplant bed way back from the spring and she's had a lot of history she's had hookah melon infestation you'll remember if you watched the show a little bit before we got back from North Carolina the hookah melons completely smothered her up and made like a little cocoon on her we got rid of all of those guys put some more nutrients on them watered them sprayed them we've had a little bit of an issue lots of things going on obviously this summer we've not had a lot of rain been really hot. But back over here I do have a couple that I saved to show you that are doing quite well and are ready to pick. It's not perfect but you know for a homegrown garden it's not bad. There's a couple more down in there and I will get in here later on this afternoon harvest these guys up and do my garlic marinated eggplant because uh, the kids love it and you can put that on hamburgers and chicken and fish it's just great it's a mediterranean dish with fresh parsley and olive oil it's, it's on the channel in the kit in the kitchen section this last bed on this side of the garden is all cabbages and cabbage did really well in this bed two years ago and so i've moved the cabbages into this bed full sun most of the day um, we have had you know a little bit of water i did water and then i didn't do water because i got busy and then i got water back on it so you can see some of the damage the leaves are a little bit mad at me about that but these guys were put in about the same time as the collards was were sorry uh about two and a half two weeks ago ish back over here on this bed we've got the radishes that are popping and one thing i love about the radishes is that if you really love to be fancy with your cooking, you can come out here and clip these little guys 
and use this as a sprinkled garnish on anything, on your rice, on your scrambled eggs. I mean, it's just beautiful looking. It looks like you're totally fine gourmet dining. Um, but you can see if you pop in through the soil down here, they're not quite big enough. We checked last week. They're still kind of cylindrical and not fat yet, but I will be harvesting these within the next little bit and tilling this bed up and getting it ready for something else as well for a, a fall harvest. Back here is a real important bed. This is the asparagus bed. Now this bed we've talked about every single time we've done a tour and this bed has been going on since 2020. Um, and so we cut back all of its growth this morning and we're going to go in here now and we're going to, we've got the dirt set up. We're going to go in here now and we're going to put on top of these. I'm going to show you just about how much I want to do. Just enough to get it covered up over the tops of these that are sticking up out of the ground. Kind of like that. And then we're going to put some microlife fertilizer on that. Water it in. And in another maybe week or two, this asparagus, the new stuff, is going to come popping up. And I don't know, I don't know if you were aware of it or not, but one asparagus spear can grow seven inches in about 12 hours. So this bed, once you get it going, it lasts, like I said, about 20 years. But not only does it last 20 years, you got to maintain it daily. You got to come out here and clip it and go eat it daily. So I'm excited about that because it looks to me like we've got enough sticking out of the ground now that we really should be able to start harvesting asparagus on a regular basis and pickling it, grilling it, sauteing it in eggs and Swiss cheese. I mean, everything in the world you can think of is delicious with asparagus. And asparagus is one of those vegetables that's not very, very cheap. So this is a nice thing to do if you can in your garden. Back over here, I've got pitiful tomato bed. Three little tomatoes that I put in, oh, about three or four months ago. I had them caged up, and when we pulled the cages off today to get busy in here and get ready for this tour for y'all, some of the tops ripped off. I'm not worried about it. I don't think it's going to make any difference. You know, we'll be lucky if we get some. When I got back from North Carolina back in the end of May, early June, you guys remember the tomatoes were everywhere. And they were covered in bugs and little feather-footed nymphs and all kinds of infestations of blight and just gross. So I'll be happy if we get a few tomatoes. And if we don't, no worries. I'll sow those seeds in the beginning part of the year and then put them out early March and we'll have plenty for the next summer. This bed has just been cleaned up as well. It has cuckoo melons. We let it go. So we've tilled it. We're getting ready to put some more stuff in here. I haven't decided yet just what probably some purple cabbage and some orange cauliflower. I've got some special seeds. This is my lavender bed, which is doing quite well. I've got a spot over here I want to show you. It's looking kind of dried up and I need to actually work on these, but this is what I use to make my lavender milk baths for my friends for Christmas. And there's a recipe for that too on the channel. This is just lovely, and it smells really, really nice. So I'm gonna put that in my pocket. Right here, I'm really happy about this. This is the okra bed. Well, I should say I'm happy, and I'm a little nervous. We took the top off again today. They've been sitting underneath the cage. Every year that I've planted okra in the garden, the deer will come in overnight and eat it straight to the ground. So as you can see, this is a different variety from what you're probably used to seeing. There are these gorgeous, big, beautiful okra. It's a very different breed. I grew it from seed, from heirloom seed. Um, and I'm excited about using it on a recipe, but I'm also really concerned about the deer coming in here and chomping it down to the ground. So I need it to grow. I need the height for it, because that's how okra does grow, but I need for the deer to stay off of it. So I'm gonna figure out something Maybe we're going to cast a net like I used to use on the blackberries um, until we had a bird that got caught in it. And I said no more of that. Hopefully we don't have a bird get caught in the okra. 
but we've got to figure out some way to deter the deer from this particular bed because guys look at they're just gorgeous i mean like it is an absolutely stunning stunning vegetable i'm really really happy with the way these turned out back in this bed i've got the acorn squashes started and they're doing quite well a little bit of yellowing here and there a little bit too much water but for the most part everything here is looking very good and I'm excited about that as well, especially for Thanksgiving. I love to, and I'll put this recipe, I'll do it for you. I love to put it with maple syrup and bake it in the oven and put uh, caramelized pecans on it um, and some cinnamon. I mean, it is just acorn squash as a side dish for your Thanksgiving or fall at all. Even acorn squash soup with pepita seeds and cream it is just divine so this is an exciting bed for me hopefully we won't have any problems getting everything harvested we won't have any problems with bugs these beds here are our brassica beds i've planted some old rosemary and i don't know that that will take i'm going to have to put some probably some new in as well rosemary and rue are your two biggest deters naturally in organic gardening of the bugs, especially the moth that likes to come in here and lay her eggs on your brassicas. Brassicas are cauliflower, which is this bed, broccoli, which is this bed, and Brussels sprouts, which is this bed. And one little tiny itty bitty pitiful roost sitting there in the middle is also probably gonna to need to be replaced. I did micro life them. There's a little green happening on that rosemary but you know, it might just be safer for me to go ahead and put in fresh, sprinkle it in anyway, just to make sure it's there because it needs to be there and be really fragrant and pungent to deter that moth. Anyway, this is where we are right now in October with the garden. You know, you've watched me go through. I told you I had to tear everything out. We did show you a tour back. I think it was the beginning of September, late August, early September. And uh, I wanted to give you a quick tour to show you where we're at now with it. And as we go along, I'll keep you informed on what's going on and how they're doing. Anyway, if you did find any value in this, please do me a favor, like and share. Don't forget to ring the bell. And I'll see you soon on the channel. Take care.